She's only 35, but life has thrown Amanda some heavy-duty curveballs. Two preemie babies, both needing life support, and her own kidney failure and organ transplant. She's a fighter with a lot to fight for. Little Scarlett and Maxwell and her number one fan, husband Alan. Amanda's suppressed immune system means she's virtually confined to home in an attempt to minimise the risk of infections. Understandably, renovations have gone on the back burner. You know what it's like. You just wish somebody would come along with a magic wand and make it all happen for you. So I've been told that Amanda is out the back and we're about to surprise her with that magic wand she's been waiting for. Great to meet you. Great to meet you, Florence. A bit surprised to see us. I am. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be lying if your beautiful husband wasn't in on this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. something's planned. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and we know that you've got a, you know, been working on your renos inside the house, but the yep. backyard's been the, the last piece of the puzzle. Yeah, yeah. So much. we're kind of hoping that Better Homes and Gardens might be able to help you out. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Well, we've got the whole team coming, so... Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> She's worth it, definitely. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> this is going to be a huge task. So, as the saying goes, many hands make light work. Well, that's the theory. <laughs> this is Jason. This is Scarlett. Hello, Scarlett. Say hi. Nice to meet you, Princess. Graham, Tara, Adam. Hello. Amanda, <laughs> Alan. Hi. And little Max. Hi, hello. Hi, how are you? Hi. Gosh, you do look excited. Hey. You know how we were like a blank canvas? Yeah. Wow, we've got that. <laughs> oh, it's unbelievable. Do you want to maybe tell everyone I'm out? Because this, this is quite new. You've done this, haven't you? Yeah, it's you? a yeah. fresh slab ready for a patio area. Oh. Patio area, so a bit of outdoor entertaining. Nice. Okay. And what do you want in your yard? Do you want somewhere to play? Yeah, somewhere to play? <laughs> Max just wants to get out there now. He wants yeah, to join yeah, in the fun. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you two actually go and have a rest for a couple of days and Excellent. take it easy? Cool. Great, Come back you. and see a whole new backyard. Wow. Yeah. Oh, it's it's beautiful. So, Alan, what do you think they're going to do to the backyard? Oh, it's, it's a mystery. I don't know. It's, oh, it's exciting, whatever it's, it's going to be. Exciting, but, uh... but yeah. With Amanda's health issues, home is very much their castle which is why we're determined to create an outdoor entertaining and play area they'll never want to leave. And considering what this family have been through in the last few years, this is the least we can do. Adding to Amanda's kidney problems, she has lupus, an autoimmune disease. So it was somewhat of a miracle when young Scarlett came into the world, earlier than anticipated, but best for Amanda. The safest way was to get Scarlett out and um, safest for me that she'd come out at 29 weeks. 29 weeks? Yeah. So what size is she at 29 weeks? She was 1.1 kilos. Wow. Yeah. And 20 months later, Max was delivered by caesarean section, again prematurely because the pregnancies had taken their toll on Amanda's kidney function. He was 680 grams. 680 <laughs> grams? Yeah. That's, 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 it's like a small Coke bottle. Oh, that's extraordinary. <laughs> yeah. What Amanda went through to have these babies left her needing dialysis and ultimately a kidney transplant, but finally life is getting back to normal after a rocky few years for everyone. So you're right, they are absolutely gorgeous Amazing. people, which is why we've got to do something really special for them. Yeah, definitely. Well, Alan said he wanted a patio out here. Yeah. So I'm thinking of extending this garage with a pergola. Oh, yeah, nice. And, and then Amanda's going to have some shade to sit gorgeous. under. But there's, <laughs> that Definitely. But there's so much room here, the kids will still have heaps of room to play. And, you know, that's so good, because if we can open up this door, maybe we can make this a special place for Amanda, something of her own. I know they don't park cars yeah. in here, so she can watch the kids while they're playing and just shut the door down at the end of the day. Great See, idea. that is a top idea, because she actually loves a recycled fashion, and she, at the moment, so the good. clothes are taking over the entire house. <laughs> what I like most is it's an old-school backyard. It's a big block of land. <laughs> yeah. So I can take up a lot of that, and I'm going to build a play venture area, something the size that you'd see in a local park. Well, I tell you what, it's not going to do itself, so let's get going. Oh, OK, right, done. Take all the mud. All our plans are an attempt to bring the world to Amanda, so she doesn't feel like she's missing out. 
Now Amanda's into upcycling fashion, but given her health, it has to be done at home. And yes, the house is full of clothes. So we're going to transform the garage into Amanda's very own studio space. Smells like grease. <laughs> hey, it's not a bad space. It's good, isn't it? It's pretty cool. I love the beams. Love the beams, and I actually don't even mind timber on the walls. It's cute, isn't it? We could keep that. The colour's good. We could, if we make this light bright, white. Yeah. Keep the timber. Hide the sarking. Yeah, and we can reuse this. Reuse it? Have you seen this end? You okay. know I like rustic. <laughs> <laughs> there's rustic, then there's seriously rustic. I think but this is good. Right. This is a keeper and the timber. Yeah. Right, perfect. Okay. Coming out. Ads. Oh. Gee, don't interrupt you. I can tell you're busy. No, you're right. You know how Amanda has to live a really healthy lifestyle as a matter of necessity? Yeah. I've been thinking herb garden, a really serious herb garden. I like the sound of it. What are you thinking? I just happen to have a drawing. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> yeah, plant a box across the front. Yeah. OK, and then some seating. Sit back, relax, and then a wall of herbs. I'm all over it, G. I've got it. Oh, you're a good man. Go for it. I was gonna give it to you. Patch up the concrete. Yeah. Get into it, Chase. As you can see, nothing's going to stop us from getting this job done. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a nervous image. All right, so here's our plan. I've just got little G there marking out the edges. I can go around and get them nice and flat. We're using the existing cubby house, but throwing in some more real estate. And get two more cubby houses and connect them with bridges so you can get from A to B to C without touching the ground, which is very important if you've got a rogue crocodile in your backyard. So around the outside of the whole play area for the two little kids, we're going to put a track in softball. Now, even though it's softball, it needs a firm footing. That's why we're going to go about 100 mil deep all the way around the outside with this crushing dust, just like the stuff that you'd put as your sub base underneath paving. Once you've got the crusher dust down, you've got to whack it until it's firm. Now, to make the backyard even more inviting, we need to install some shade. So Graham's got the job of finding some established trees, and to plant them, he's going to need some big holes. And out the front, it looks like Adam's pergola timber's just arrived. Look at that, straight off the back of the truck. Everything we need to build this pergola all in one package. Made to order, pre-cut, ready for you to assemble. Let's rip into it. Now, you do need to be a little bit handy to put one of these together, but with the Softwoods Custom Kit, literally everything is here, from the timber to the fixings to the roof. But you might need a mate to help you out. Now, before I put a post in the ground or the perimeter beams up, the first thing I'm going to do is paint all this timber because it's a lot easier and safer to do while I'm on the ground rather than being up in the air. It looks like Jace has got a good start. I'm ready to get a start on this pergola too. So these modular systems are great. You can see that it comes with the plan view and then we've got our elevations as well. For the placement, I'm going to be lining up with this existing garage. So you can see that I've pulled this string line yep. through to give us a line to work to. And that's where I'm going to be setting the posts out and then I'll take all my measurements off that. All right, now we're ready to put these posts in and they'll just slip into the stirrup. Make sure that you've got your checkout face in the right way. And then we'll plumb it up and fix it in place. Throughout all of Amanda's health problems, her mum, Lynn, has been there doing all she could to help. Hard work? Well, you know, giving it a red hot crack. But I tell you what, I reckon you've got to be up for nanny <laughs> and mother of the year. Thank you. Because obviously you've been a big support. Thank you, yeah. Amanda and Alan, yeah. Yeah, I need somebody, yeah. you know. She's gone through a lot. Yeah. She's a very strong girl. We'll get there. Yeah, it's been a long journey. Long journey. Keep Actually, up the good work, Lee. Thank you very much, All Adam. Right. And team. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> It looks better. 
It looks you know, so much better. Well, we're lucky because Amanda's already got sarking up here. It's got insulation in it, yeah. so it's going to help keep it cooler. And that's just cosmetic. Just... Yeah, but how much better does it look having it sort of a bit cleaner as opposed to, you know, the sarking hanging down low? Yeah, so once we spray it white, the whole thing will just kind of disappear. And it'll just... yeah. It's going to be so fresh in here. With the team hard at it, I'm on the hunt for mature trees for Amanda and Alan's bare backyard. And I've come to Alpine Tree Movals, and it looks like I'm spoiled for choice. These guys grow their own stock, but they also rescue mature trees that are no longer wanted. Here, yeah, how are you? Good, mate, how are you? You go for a ride? They've really come on well, haven't they? Maury's helping us out with some super advanced trees. Big trees don't come with a small price tag, but just think, they've been sitting around growing for between five to ten years. What we're looking for, Maury, uh, I want some narrow, upright trees. Easy, care, no maintenance, just beautiful. And let in a bit of sunshine. Yeah, well, I think you've come to the right spot here. You've got um, this beautiful variety called Fraxinus urbanite. And, uh, That's one of the ashes? Yeah. Have one of those? Yep, yeah, absolutely. Sure? Done. I have loved this tree since I was a teenager. Beautiful. Uh, the golden ash, a uh, small tree, handles the heat fairly well as well. Now, this would be pretty good, I think, for our garden. Yeah, this is Acer October Glory. October yes. Glory, so it's got autumn foliage and then spring foliage. Yeah. It's your it's beauty. Love it. OK. Well, that's my shopping done. Thank you very much. I'll see you back at location. You know where to go? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, good man. Amanda and Alan and the two kids have a beautiful sized backyard. They've already got a cubby house, but I'm going to add to it. Not once, but twice, giving them three cubby house. In other words, three bedroom house in the backyard. Well, that's the one they've got. So to add to that, I'm going to put a couple of these in. Should I get Scarlet and Max? Or Max and Scarlet? Or two kids arguing, you get them exactly the same. Two of these bad boys. So that path that I've built right around, kind of like a kidney shape, is going to get a lot of traffic, whether it be running, skipping, riding, you name it. I'm going to cover it with softball. It's the stuff you find in council playgrounds, which is soft underfoot. And, fellas, it's the stuff you find out the front of pubs where they drop the kegs. They'll be restocking when I'm finished. Right, while the boys crack on with the pergola, I'm going to get on to Graham's edible wall. Now, I love this build because it's nice and simple. If you can make a square frame and a mini stud wall, you can basically do this whole build. Now, you'll remember on the picture that we're going to go planter boxes and then the stud walls behind for the feature. And that's what I'm starting on is the planter boxes. They're going to be three high and we're using eco-friendly tree to pine sleepers for them. That means it's going to be nice and safe for the kids to eat all those beautiful plants that Graham's going to be putting in. Just need to make sure that you pre-drill your holes first. It'll make life nice and simple. Now, I wasn't lying when I said this build is simple. You can see that the planter boxes have butt joints. This mini stud wall is exactly the same. It's just timber butted together, and I'm using these bugle screws to hold everything in place. Beautiful. <laughs> there are our trees. I don't think I've ever seen Graham so excited about trees before. Woo! Sorry, Tara. Are you serious? Excuse us, sorry. What is this, Graham? That's a golden ash. Oh, it's beautiful. Whoop! Whoop. 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 <laughs> there she goes. Here you go, Adam. It's all yours now. Graham, Next. this is unbelievable. Moving through. I've heard of a mature plant, but this thing's an absolute tree, mate. It's new. <laughs> this is only the beginning. You've got two more to come. Now, with these big trees, mate, there's a lot of talk about their orientation in the nursery and then in the garden. Do you do you abide by that? Yeah, obviously a tree will grow better on the north-facing side where it's got a lot more sun. Yes. And you'd want to plant it on that side so it doesn't get sun damage, like sunburn. So always plant your tree in the same direction it's been grown in. That way, it'll do really well. 
I'm a bit fussy when it comes to planting trees, doesn't matter what size they are. Firstly, that's the grafting union there, so the rootstock is different to what's above ground, so you don't want the soil covering that up. And even in a big tree like this, just have a bit of a saucer, so when it does rain, it's all going to be captured and go straight down into the root ball. Right, we're ready to put our walls in, which is going to create some privacy, but more importantly, make it an edible wall. And the good thing about this system is you can make it as big or as small as you want, because it's all modular. So you can have one box, you can have two boxes, or you can have 20 boxes. We're cladding some of the screens with lime wash panels. And to break it up, we're covering the rest with bamboo. And then once we get it in place, we're finishing off with a metal mesh at the front. That way, Graham can put some climbers on. It'll look great. Good work, boys. Keep it coming. Just watch yourself, buddy. <laughs> Before Amanda's garage was wasted space. But now it's ready to be turned into a studio, starting with the bench we found. All right, Tara, you promised me that we're going to turn this into something fabulous. It's and so I'm beautiful. fascinated to okay. know what that's going to be. All right, number one, <laughs> yep. if you have an old workbench like this at home, complete with vice, it's worth money. We're going to save this. We're going to repurpose this into a nice little sorting bench for the swap shop for Amanda. Beautiful. So we're getting rid of the old chipboard. Yeah, chipboard has to go. I'm going to do a mosaic panel. Tiles? Buttons and tiles. Buttons, oh, I yeah. love that. But basically, I want a contrasting material, something that just creates this band of colour down the centre, and then we'll just wax up the edges. Be good as new. Amanda's mum, Lynn, has come up with the goods. She's very kindly donated her entire button collection for Amanda's brand new bench. Now, before I get started with this, what I need to do is fill in the bench. So I've got some aluminium angle, which I've had cut to size. This just gets screwed at either end. And then to fill in this section, I'm using plywood. For the next layer, a sheet of fibro will give it more strength. And because it's porous, I'm sealing it with diluted bondcrete. Lynn's buttons mixed with little glass tiles is going to turn this old workbench into a work of art. The combination of the old buttons with the beautiful glass tiles just sits so well with the old timber. I think this is a really fabulous, unique piece of furniture now. With a final grout and polish. Like and beeswax on the timber frame. This table will really come to life. OK, remember the soft fall that I picked up at Bunnings? Well, we're going to put that down over the track we've prepared. And if you can handle a trowel, this is a DIY job. Now, the reason why this stays together is because of that binding agent. Now, that binding agent on your skin is no good and on your tools is no good either. So, in each little kit comes some of this lubricant. And you have to keep reapplying it. You'll feel when it starts to stick, especially on these steel blades. You need to lay it about 15 mil thick over the base of compacted crusher dust. It'll take about six hours to set. As you can see, things are really taking shape on our first big makeover of the year. Well done, guys. My burn is one of my favourite screens. Not necessarily a hedge, because I don't like getting the shears or the petrol trimmer onto it because it's got such a big leaf. What I like to do is just go through and pinch out the heads to keep the plant smaller. That way you don't have any ripped or torn leaves. And everywhere you snip one of these off, the viburnum will start to thicken up. The deliveries just keep coming. And this time, it's for me. Yep, the cubbies are here. Cubbies come as a flat pack. Putting them together is a DIY job, but we're short of time, so these blokes are going to help us speed up the process. Danny's like, that's the world's biggest dog house. In some parts of Sydney, this is the size of the houses you're buying these days. Careful, guys, she's a bit frisky. Now, this here, oh boy, is going to be the crocodile nest. We're going to plan it out. 
It'll look a little bit like a sand pit, but it'll look more like, say, somewhere where you'd find this little beauty in the wild. We're going to put some stones around it, so it's really important the kids concentrate, stay on the stones, so they don't get snapped with those teeth. Now, something like this, you're not going to buy it on the shelf down at Bunnings, but if you go to the special orders desk and you say, I want a big green crocodile like the one Jason was talking about, well, crikey, they'll sell you one. Careful, careful, release. The door to Amanda's studio is just so beautiful and I know she loves it. So I'm giving it just a little bit of a makeover, nothing too dramatic, but it's going to bring out all of this gorgeous carved detail. I've given it a couple of coats of white paint and now it's dry. I'm just using a fine to medium grade sandpaper just to go over these kind of highlighted raised areas. In the trade, this is known as boho chic. Now, the one thing I have inherited with this door is an extra door hole. I don't need it. So what I'm using is a little piece of off-cut fence paling, a bit of glue and some screws, and that will look like a rustic door plate. A shiny black door handle finishes the whole thing off. And speaking of doors, up goes the door jam, ready for those beautiful French doors. So I've been dividing my time between the pergola and Graham's veggie wall. But as a result, we're cutting it fine to get everything done before Amanda and Alan get back. So it's a good thing Big G hasn't been off admiring his trees. Gee, this has turned out a treat, mate. I'm loving the colours. Oh, well, the colour's great. When it dries, it's much lighter. Yeah. But these boxes are fantastic, nice and deep, plenty of space to grow things in. What do you got there? Yeah, oh, well, I'm ready for the bench seats. And for that, I'm sticking with the sleeper theme. But instead of going the tree to pine, I'm using the hardwood. Going over it with a planer, then a belt sander around the edges with a router. And it's turned out a treat, don't you think? I do, mate. These are going to last till the next century. <laughs> Definitely. Now, I'm just going to finish it off with a clear coat of oil. And these are really pop. Beautiful. Now, I hate to push you, but what about my garden beds up the top? The little boxes. Yeah, right, you'll be happy to know. They're basically made. I'll just need a hand to put them up. Oh, as soon as I finish this, I'll give you a hand. We're almost there, mate. And to hold the sleepers in place, because it's down pressure, I don't have to use any fixings. I'm just using some liquid nails, and that will stop it from sliding back and forth. Oh, gee, this works a treat. <laughs> Don't get too comfortable there. <laughs> all right, all right. Now, these planter boxes do look fantastic, but to add a bit more character, I'm just putting on these recycled palings. And by the time G adds his plants, these things are going to be popping off the wall. So Max and Scarlett, or Scarlett and Max, we're going to connect the two with a ramp or a bridge coming out here in an L shape. We'll put a post in here so it's nice and solid. Paint it black, you won't even notice. It'll look like it's floating. Now, as these are, they're a little bit dangerous, but if we bury them about a third in the ground, they'll be fine. They can be really high steppers for the kids, or they can be somewhere where they sit down, eat things like watermelon and ice cream, and make as much mess as they like. Amanda and Alan, well, they have so much going on in their lives, so I'm sure you'll appreciate that getting a hot, cooked meal on the table each night for them and the kids can be a little bit more of a chore than it is for most of us. So we've called in Airtasker once again to help us out. I put the call out on the Airtasker app for someone who can cook up a stack of pre-prepared meals and then deliver them to Amanda and Alan's place. Within moments, I'd found Chloe, told her what I needed, and a few hours later, she was in the kitchen with everything ready to go. Chloe, what a gem. This looks delicious. Thank you. What have we got here? So we've got some Thai beef curry, uh, with turmeric spaghetti pasta, some fresh veggies, and also some fried rice for the family. It just looks so fresh and so colourful. So this mm -hmm. all goes into the freezer? It does, yeah. Wow, so each night all they need to do is pull it out, microwave, ready to go. That's it. It's so good. So how does this work? Can anybody organise food? Can they organise shopping or the full cooking service? It's entirely up to them. I mean, usually we will organise the meals for them, mm -hmm. go and purchase them, put them in the containers, and then deliver it to their front door. Gosh, it doesn't get any easier than that, does it? <laughs> I think I might have to be rethinking this. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much. This is going to make the world of difference to everyday living for these guys. Thank you. No problem. Let's get them in the freezer. OK, outside we've made up valuable time and the pergola finish line is not too far off. 
Now we're ready for the roof so we can create some shape and finish this job off. Thanks, mate. In this kit form, you get a few options for your roof covering. You can either go with polycarbonate or you can choose the tin. We've decided to go with the high quality polycarbonate, which blocks out the maximum UV rays, but still lets the light through. And we've chosen solar ice for the color. I love what councils are doing with their play areas these days, but one of the things I think that they lack is they put the plants well away from the garden area. And I know there's lots of wear and tear with hundreds of kids, but I like here how we've brought the garden in and around our play area. I like how this is still a sand pit, but it's not just a designated sand pit. You can walk through it, climb over the croc, and admire the plants, making it look more natural. Now, if you look at my plant selection, about 90% of it's native. This flowering ornamental prunus isn't, and this little glauca fescue isn't. This one's called Beyond Blue. It's South African, but we can claim it because it loves our conditions. We've got Lamandra, Crackerjack, Coastal Rosemary or Restringer, Kangaroo Paw, and this one here, now make sure if you get it, it's called fountain grass or foxtail grass. It's the original green version of that burgundy one that we've been planting for a fair few years. Make sure it's the Australian native and not the South African one. The South African one self seeds and it'll take over your whole backyard. But this one, it's a cracker. You cut it back at the end of winter and then going into spring, it just bursts to life with green and it's got those pom-poms on the end. Now, Amanda loves her cooking, especially with chilies. So we're planting three different varieties, mild, medium, and this one here is basket of fire. That's hot. She's going to love it. Now, it's essential for Amanda to live a really healthy lifestyle. So that's when homegrown vegetables and herbs come into their own. Capsicums, beautiful basil at the back there, and golden marjoram right at the front. By keeping this timber wall raw, it adds really great texture and contrast to the space. It's something that also will help to connect this area with the outdoor room. And by having this little section down here just kind of broken up with little timber elements, it'll add fantastic storage and also a little bit of quirkiness for Amanda. little bit of fun, looks great on its own, but you know if Amanda needs to actually hang clothes on it, it's practical too. Oh no, beep, 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 beep. No more coming through the studio, new world order. This way. Thank you. More like it. Graham. Mate. Hey, this is turning out fantastic. What's going on the uh, mesh? Aha. Uh -huh. Blueberries. <laughs> Oh, look, look at, that. at that. That's great. Max and Scarlett, they can come and sit here with their mum. Yeah. Pick fruit. And eat it. Yeah. I remember when I was young, I used to pick blueberries and just eat them. It was fantastic. Yeah, yeah it tastes good. Now I just eat them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Full of vitamin C. Oh, this is amazing. How good is it? This will all intertwine into this uh, mesh, obviously. Yep. A lot of people get worried about growing blueberries, but yep. you really don't need to prune it. Pretty hardy? Yeah, very yeah. hardy. Yeah. And the new varieties will grow in the warmer climates. You don't need cold climates. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, blueberries are a great backyard awesome. crop. Yeah, it's fantastic. The kidney shaped necklace Amanda wears is a reminder of the gift she's been given. Just who gave her that gift? Her very dear cousin Claire. Ah, you must be Claire. Hello. How you going? This is Adam. Hello, Adam. Nice to meet you. Big G. Nice to meet you. I'm gonna give you a hug. Oh, oh, you're an absolute how you going? You good? Oh, Mel, thank you so much. Hello, beautiful lady. Thanks. Oh, it's nice to meet you. Thank you. You too. Awesome. Thank Welcome you. to the team. And thank you, of course, are the donor. I am. How incredible. What an amazing donation. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Can't help but notice Claire is wearing the same necklace as Amanda, a symbol of the connection they will yeah, they always are. share. Yes. But on top of that, you are a paramedic. I am, You yeah. give 24-7 to your community. That's unbelievable. Thank you. No. We have heaps more ahead, and Claire's offered to help out on the other side there. We've got some basil to put in right next door to the tomato. Interestingly, it's a funny thing that this little plant next to the tomato is very likely the best combination. Yeah, yeah. And if you plant basil with your tomatoes or with your beans or with your eggplants, you don't get any white fly. Okay. 
So it's another nice little organic combination. You've known each other since you were kids, cousins. Yeah, we are first cousins. We come from a huge family on our dad's side. Yeah. And we were about the closest in age, so we grew up together. You have another connection, though, because you lost, you both lost a parent as, we did. as youngsters. Yeah, we did. Um, my dad died in a car accident when I was 17. My brother was 14. And Mandy lost her dad to cancer a few years later. And so I guess through those circumstances, we've always had a little bit of a bond over yeah, that as Much well. closer bond than yeah, just cousins. Yeah. What is it like when you sit down, wake up in the morning, <laughs> and you think, what have I done? Sometimes I do think that, but it's, I always think that that little, little operation has how much it's helped Mandy and Alan and the kids. And, and it also makes me so amazed at our bodies and how, and how I've just, I've recovered so well and how that it just made such a huge impact on their lives and a little impact on mine. Yeah. yeah. It's like we were designed to maybe share. I think so. Maybe, maybe. that's why they gave us two. Yeah, for maybe sure. Maybe that's why they gave yeah. us two. <laughs> We've got the soft track, we've got the soft four mulch, but we've got the original soft four. The grass to go around the edges doesn't just dress up the garden, it's great for the kids to play on. With a couple more quirky shelves, Amanda's studio is looking great. The only thing letting it down is the floor. Now, I'm just pre-warning you, it's not cut to size. So I just kind of want to line it up so we can start to trim it. It's just so practical. It's loose lay. You could glue it, but this one's loose lay. That's not bad. Oh, my gosh, that looks so great. So happy. And look, connects. This has come off a tree. It's pretty, isn't it? It's gorgeous. It's like a little shop counter. I love it. All your little buttons. Yeah. There we go. Now, are you doing any particular colour coordination here? Yeah, so we're starting here? heavy jeans, lots of lights and whites going up to the, to the darks, like you'd see it in a proper shop. She's been organised, got everything priced. It's gorgeous. Have the girls over, have little parties. And the finishing touch. A little lovely. What garage? This is the exciting part, Joe. Yeah, it is. It's absolutely... <laughs> Brilliant. These, smash it. Look at these cushions, mate. Awesome. What do you think, Jay? This just uh, completes the set. Mate, mate, mate. Oh. You've got a... That's better. How yeah, fussy is it? Beautiful. You might think we're just making a garden, but when I look at that, I reckon we're making family's dreams come true and memories that'll last a lifetime. Amanda's studio is going to be such a fun, creative space for us, so there's only one thing missing, and that's a name. Here we go, all done. Studio swap, open for business. We've really tried to bring the outside world right into Amanda's backyard. A place to play, to work, and to relax. Gosh, this is unreal. Amazing. Isn't it amazing? Just looking out from that studio to the, all the way to the end of the backyard. It's huge. It's huge, but it's right. stunning. Right. Lots of sections. It goes one, two, three, right into the backyard. Do you have a favourite bit? Well, for me, it would have to be this pergola. <laughs> just the way that it joins oh, onto sorry. the garage and then just takes you out to this amazing backyard. How can you not like it? This is exactly what they wanted. Yeah. Yeah. They said they just wanted a patio area where they could sit with the kids and entertain. This will be beyond their expectations, yeah. won't it? Amazing. A couple of hurdles. What about for you, Hodgie? I just found it was a great block of land, but it was hot, flat, dry, you know, and now every kid in the street's going to want to come and visit. So inviting. Yeah. Seriously. It doesn't look like high maintenance either. No, it's good. It, it's easy to look after. In fact, it doesn't need to water it. It'll, it'll be great. Well, well done, everyone. I mean, it's a beautiful family we're doing this for, but this is so exciting for them to see. I can't wait. Here they come! <laughs> Hello, Amanda. How are you? How are you? You look beautiful. Oh, thank you. You look great too, Alan. Oh, thank you, Gonnie Jo. Are you ready to move? I don't know. Go <laughs> on in. 
the gate. OK, I'll tell you when to look up, but not for a while yet. So you're coming down. All right. Coming down. OK, keep eyes closed. Yeah, keep close, eyes closed. close them down. Don't lead me into the pole. OK, come over here. Just step towards here. All right, I'm just dragging it out now because I can. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready? And you can open your eyes. Oh, my God! Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Were you, when you were thinking of a patio out here before you left, was this something that you were thinking of? Do it. Not this good. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think of anything. Oh, this is, wow, this is amazing, guys. This is amazing. Thank you. Well, Alan definitely could have done it by himself. <laughs> Can you see behind the team? You have an entire. You tell them, Graham. It's all well, you've got a beautiful hanging garden. Yeah, Babylon was nothing like this. <laughs> <laughs> you've got fruits, you've got vegetables, you've got herbs, you've got colour, you've got flowers. All the nutrition that you're going to need. Wow. <laughs> that is sensational. Well done. <laughs>